It's only when we have completed the forwards pass that we can do the backwards pass. This is because the backwards pass works backwards from the end of the project. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that the latest starting time is going to be the same as the earliest starting time at the end for the finished task. So whatever early, early start time you have at the finish, we're going to say that is the latest start time. And we're going to work backwards through the project to then calculate the latest starting time of every activity. So the latest starting time of an activity is a matter of common sense. Uh, this lecture should take 50 minutes uh, when it's delivered in a lecture room, and it must finish by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so the latest I can start it will be 10 past 2. So sometimes common sense is the easiest way of calculating these things rather than trying to remember these equations. The latest that you can start something is the latest starting time of the following activity minus the duration of itself. We're going to work our way backwards through the project until we get back to the start. However, we may have lead time and we may have lag time. As we're going backwards through the project, calculating the latest start time, if we've got a situation where there's lead time, we have to add it in to our calculations. And if we have a situation of lag time, we have to subtract it. So the lag time represents a delay. So we have to add it in to the durations that we're subtracting. So the latest starting time of any activity is the latest starting time of the following activity minus the duration of itself, minus any lag, plus any lead. Now this sounds really complicated. I really suggest you go for the common sense approach. You know, if I want to catch a train at six o'clock and it takes me 10 minutes to walk to the station, the latest I can leave here is 5.50. For the first five years of delivering this as a project management educator, I used to have to sketch these out just to remind myself each time, draw a little Gantt bar. Now, using this method, we can work our way backwards through the dependency chart, calculating the latest start time. But sometimes a task has got two or more tasks after it. And just as we went forwards through the project, we had to take the biggest number. When we're coming backwards through the project, the latest starting time will be the smallest of the possible routes back through the project. Don't worry if you're feeling really confused, we will be doing a paper-based exercise in the seminar for this, where everybody will have to have an attempt at doing this. And we've got an example coming up at the end of this lecture. Now, all of these numbers that we're calculating, the early start time, the latest start time, and every task has got a duration, uh, need to be captured. So instead of just having a task name, we're going to create these boxes uh, around our task name to indicate the EST, early start time, the LST, the latest start time. I'm going to make it clear what the duration is. We're going to calculate this thing called float, and the next slide will show you what float is.